uh, venerable sisters, uh, dear Dhamma friends. So we have come to the uh, first session, uh, quest question and answer session of Kalalgoda English Medium Retreat. First of all, I welcome all of you for English Medium Retreat. So it seems like we have some written questions, so I invite our Dila to present the written questions. Thank you, Venerable Bhante. We have six questions, and the seventh one is like a good wish for everybody. Yes. So I will start with the first one, Venerable Bhante. I started practicing meditation about two years back. After about one year, I felt a tingling sensation on my shoulder after walking meditation. Later, I managed to concentrate a little during sitting meditation, but could not hold it for a long time. I could not continue meditation for um, a while due to various reasons. Now, although I feel the in-breath and out-breath, I can't locate an exact position where it touches the nostril. Then I tried to watch rising and falling, but it's not very successful. Could you please advise me to carry on my meditation? Teruan Sarnai, may you attain Nibbana. Yeah. So I think uh, it is not necessary to switch to rising and falling. So if you are confident that uh, you already have succeeded some time back using Anapanasati, it's a matter of uh, regaining that uh, capacity, regaining that skill. So due to various reasons, you have mentioned that you couldn't practice, you couldn't continue your practice. So you, you can restart. When you are restart. When you are restarting, you can do it as a beginner. So one main issue we come across is that uh, we regrets about the past, thinking that uh, I was in such and such position now I couldn't come to that stage. So that becomes a kind of a hindrance. Uh, that becomes a kind of a burden to your mind because you are not uh, beginning like a fresher, beginning like a, a newcomer. Rather you ex expect some kind of a maturity immediately. So if you are simply starting your journey again, anew, then you can succeed. So on the other hand, uh, when you are starting anew, Basically, you can even come across new avenues which you might not even aware of previous occasion. So therefore, just start as a beginner and once you are sitting, just check whether you can keep your attention on your posture and simply be aware if your mind is wandering either to the past or to the future. So more and more, if you are able to understand that, then you can neglect or let go of past and the future come to the present moment. As an indication that uh, you are in the present moment, you can feel certain points, like certain uh, parameters, certain attributes, like you can feel your breath, you can feel rising and falling, and you can feel the weight of the body, maybe certain touching points. So likewise, there are certain indicators helping you to uh, telling you that uh, you are in the present moment. Those are not very complicated things, but very normal, mundane attributes, simple attributes, indicating that you are in the present moment. Your mind is not complicated. More and more you appreciate this simplicity, more and more you appreciate in this present moment, then mind uh, becomes a little joyful, uh, you lose a little, about, little restless and the mind becomes more and more concentrated and uh, because you are now appreciating this simple present moment. So you are aware of the present moment. So then as an improvement of that, you may be able to feel that something is going on in the body. It may not be exactly breathing, it may be some another feeling even. But slowly, slowly, check whether you can keep your attention or take your attention to the nostril. It is not necessary exactly to find the point. So sometimes we may be looking for a very sharp point that I should be able to exactly figure out what is the exact point. That becomes a little difficult at the beginning. So you, if, if you are able to understand, right now I am 
what is going through is an in breath so know how how you know in breath right now what is going on is in out breath so now it is in breath now it is out breath if you know that thus these two things separately that's a good achievement so it's a, we are going on in a slow slow motion kind of a step by step by step process so just aware now you are breathing in now you are breathing out now you are breathing in now we are breathing out slowly slowly establish mindfulness let go of the past and the future now in the present moment breathing in breathing out slowly slowly when you are able to collect your attention to the nostril area more your attention grows more your focus grows more your concentration grows you would be able to understand even subtle points related to the breath so there are certain indicators like the in breath may be little warmer than the out breath sorry in breath may be little cooler than the out breath or the rubbing sensation which is happening from due to the in breath may be little different than the out breath so like that there are little differences which should be able to where you would be able to find out so that is a indication that your awareness improve your clear comprehension improves so then you may be able to find out the exact point even where it is touching so at the beginning if you are touching to come to this immediately then it's too much so therefore just just be happy just being able to establish your mindfulness in the present moment just glad about it and then you are able to find out more and more detail as a result you will be able to find out the exact point so anyway if you need any more clarification any help please feel free to ask so otherwise we are continuing the continuing to the next section uh the next question this is from a 64 year old female yogi most venerable bante primary object of my mindfulness practice this morning was in breath and out breath i experienced my in breath when air was entering mostly through the right nostril and felt air passing along the inner um surface of the right nasal cavity as mentioned in the example given by you i too felt uh, my exhalation was through the left nostril air was touching uh, around the left nostril extending towards the tip of the nose i t- uh, i felt both in breath and out breath of almost same duration however exhaled air was warmer than the inhaled air at the beginning i was able to focus in breath and out breath only for about 15 breaths the severe pain behind my neck distracted breathing when i de- what i then did was i inhaled with compassion towards the pain and exhaled thinking relax relax after about 40 minutes of doing this my neck muscles softened and i was relieved of the pain then i was able to continue uh with the in breath and out breath without much distraction teruan saranai good uh so i also have heard like uh, you know breathing in you can sort of use that as a kind of a mind uh, loving kindness practice like moving i mean kind of spreading some metta towards yourself and when you are breathing out you can do it as a loving kindness meditation towards the outside so that is something that you can merge metta and anapanasati together that is if you like you can do it and see what is the situation uh on the other hand if you are able to continue by overcoming this uh, issue then please continue and uh, but uh, later on again it might arise so it's not a guarantee because uh, 
sometimes these pains may disappear but again they might arise so but uh, pain is in one sense is a good meditation object so at the beginning you it appears like a issue it appears like a problem but later on once you are able to develop mindfulness pain itself becomes a meditation object that's what uh, called vedana nupassana but at that time your sort of uh, attitude uh, has to be not like uh, i am looking at pain in order to get rid of it rather i am looking at pain in order to learn from it so there has to be a significant uh, attitude change when you are sort of going for uh, vedana nupassana otherwise uh, this pain becomes a real problem become a headache so therefore uh, if it, if it is possible for you to uh, neglect pain and continue with anapanasati that's a good sign because anapanasati is the place where you are growing your mindfulness growing your attention growing your concentration with that concentrated mind collected mind when you are focusing to pain so it's a different story not like you are simply watching the pain but you are now you are looking at the pain with some uh, heightened mind with some developed mind concentrated mind so therefore uh, continue with anapanasati and even when pain arise check whether you can still continue so if only the pain distract you heavily then only you can give up anapanasati and come back to pain i am actually this instruction is for a beginner not for a sort of a season yogi where if you are able to maintain some equanimity even to the pain and with little anapanasati you can go to vedana nupassana it's a, actually this whole practice evolves it's not a kind of a every day you have to maintain the same uh, time table or every day you have to maintain the same kind of uh, procedure rather you can do slight adjustments and see what would be the best for that particular day or that particular session suppose say for example in the morning when you sit you sit for say 15 minutes after that uh, say you observe your breath and you are able to establish mindfulness then that pain arises so you struggled for about 5 10 minutes it's increasing and now you started to watch pain doesn't matter suppose you are able to handle it so using this technique or any other technique and you are relieved and then you are again starting with anapanasati so this this might work for one day another day suppose you are going through anapanasati for even half an hour without pain that also can be possible so these are all circumps i uh, mean day i mean daily these things might change so just uh, accept these things so have a open mind whatever the way it uh, unfold so you are able to go through it you are able to continue like that so have an open mind so if, if the pain is there check whether you can even while pain is available whether you are able to continue with anapanasati if pain is severe then you may able to look at pain with some uh, sort of kindness sign of compassion kind of a mild attitude towards that then the pain might disappear or even pain might increase so these are uh, little uh, things uh, sometimes you can change your posture so you can either if your neck pain is there little you can adjust your posture and check whether you can overcome this problem and later on once you are in a good position to look at pain with a fairly good equanimity then pain itself becomes your teacher so you can learn a lot from uh, pain yes venerable bante i experienced a tightening of my forehead and vibrations when i was noting my in and out breath the moment i stopped meditating these sensations were gone when i'm experiencing these sensations do i ignore them i tried to ignore but they kept coming back thank you could you repeat the question yes. yeah um venerable bande i experienced a tightening of my forehead and vibrations when i was noting my in and out breath right 
the moment I stopped meditating, these sensations were gone. When I am experiencing these sensations, do I ignore them? Right. I tried to ignore, but they kept coming back. Yeah. So, for some yogis, actually when you start to use anapanasati, these kinds of issues can come. So, I, I like to know whether you tried some other method, like rising and falling. Did you try? Oh, is it the only method you tried and every time you try, every time you like to start, is this pain going to appear in the forehead? If the yogi can, yes. I tried the, I tried the rising and falling also, I mean I shifted. Right. Um, maybe not so severe. But right. The mom, it was more severe when uh, I was uh, noting the in and out breath. Yes. So, how long, by the way, are you practicing now? Uh, two, three years, maybe. Two, three years. I mean, are you continuously getting this pain or you come across this only recently? Uh, I, I, I've noticed I come across this when I come for retreats. Come for retreats only. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's the environment, I don't know. Right. So, at home, no problem. At home, no. This level of concentration is also not there. Not there, okay. yes. So that's one thing. So one, one sign that we can tell is that uh, these pains are available, but only visible or only you are able to sense them when your concentration is high. When your focus, the mindfulness is high. But when your mind is distracted, you can't uh, feel them. But in a retreat situation, you are developing your concentration. Now you are able to feel them severely or in a significant way. So, but that is an advantage. So, are you able to continue your meditation with this, or is it becomes a problem for you now? Not a problem. I Not a problem. Continue. Right. So, in Anapanasati, what is the stage as per your knowledge where you are now? I don't follow you. I mean. In Anapanasati meditation, yeah. what is the stage are you in now? Going through, what is the kind of stage you are? I mean, are you able to uh, uh, sort of uh, concentrate com without any distraction, with barely on the breath? Uh, I feel uh, the, the thoughts are there, but at bay. It's constantly there. It's not that there is a moment... I don't know, I can't recall it being completely clear, right. but it's at bay. It doesn't disturb right. me as such. Right. So that means, so are you able to fully aware of the complete in-breath and then fully aware of the complete out-breath? Uh, sometimes, yes. Sometimes. Well, not for a long period of time. There are moments when I can. So, say for example, so if you are able to understand, okay, this is the beginning of the in-breath, so this is the middle, this is the end. Yes. There's a little gap and then there's a beginning of the out-breath, this is the middle, this is the end. After a little gap, this is the beginning of the in-breath, middle, end. Like that, are yes. you able to maintain your attention continuously on this process? Uh, can do. Yeah, can. So, for how long, like? Half an hour? Maybe 20 minutes, maybe, 20 minutes. maybe not half an hour. Yes. Yeah, so you have to improve. So please continue, I mean, if it is possible for you to continue like that, then definitely mind will further uh, sort of calms down. So, uh, have you gone through this kind of calming down? So you are sort of very much uh, fully aware of the complete cycle of in-breath and out-breath. While you are watching it, mind becomes uh, calmed down and the breath becomes softer or softened. Yes. Have you subtle? Yes. So you, okay. So at that time, just maintain your attention at the nostril. Don't uh, allow it to become restless and just try to maintain it. So you are now sort of building up the concentration. Uh, so when is this pain you can feel? Is it at the very beginning of your sense, I mean, Anapanasati, or is it when you are coming to this kind of subtle stage? I think more subtle stage. More subtle stage, okay. 
So if, if you are able to build up this concentration and then this pain is available for you, then you can slowly cha change your attention to that, that pain. But only thing is, I mean, if you go too early to observe that, then mind distracts. Uh, on the other hand, if, you be, if your whole body becomes entirely very light and you can't feel anything, then it's too far. I mean, it's, uh, then you are gone too far. So therefore, if, if you think that uh, your mind is now become concentrated, you are in a very subtle stage of the breath, and you can maintain that for uh, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, then we can accept that as a, you now have a developed amount or rather possibility to con change your attention to uh, this pain. So basically you are changing by now to, uh, from Anapanasati to Dhatu Manasikara, to four element meditation. Or rather, if you are looking at the pain in that point, then you have to Vedana Pasana. So you can try basically. So don't, I mean, don't think this pain becomes a hindrance. Rather, it's a, it's a kind of a blessing that when your concentration develops, now the next, next stage is available for you. Next stage is ready for you to take your attention. So you are building your concentration from this side. Slowly the next stage is available. Next stage is uh, uh, inviting you and once you develop this stage to significant amount now you slowly neglect anapanasati and just pay your attention to feeling pay your attention to pain so this pain is uh, not uh, at the beginning might not give you much information so it's just a pain so you might even fall asleep or your mind might return back to anapanasati so these things can happen. But your duty now is to again take your attention back to pain. Because your pain, this pain becomes your primary object. Not anapanasati. Now you are changing the object. So you have to experiment and see. So if it is continuously distracting, you can't maintain your attention at pain, your mind is asking that uh, when it is going away, I need to get rid of it many stories then too early that means you have to stay more with anapanasati further you go you, further you have to improve anapanasati let the mind becomes more and more subtle more and more focused then only you have to come back to with uh, pain so you need to find out the right time through experiment yeah, yeah so we are on to the fourth question venerable bante being my very first official experience, I have some questions as follows. So there are three little questions. While you meditate, it is very difficult to keep one concentrated idea or object in the mind. How to overcome that? So actually, um, this is uh, a somewhat Samatha related question. So we expect our mind always have to be concentrated on one object. So this is the this is the target. So this is not necessary. So if you are making this as a this should be with one object, with my breath, no distraction. So how can you get this immediately? So you can't. So have some openness. So let it go. Let it go to some other things. So just just don't support those uh, distractions. So immediately if you expect too much, immediately just to sit as a beginner and you expect your mind to be from the beginning to the end, the first second or oh, first minute to the 60th minute, mind has to be with breath. It will never be like that. <laughs> so it's a human mind. <laughs> not the robo robotic mind, <laughs> so it's a human mind, so it will never stay with like that. So, so therefore just have openness, so yeah, you are trying your best, you are trying your best to keep your attention on breath or whatever the other object and if it is going out and be aware that now it is not with the breath, it is now with the sound, it is now with uh, something else, Some uh, say 
uh, pain or some thoughts are there. So inner chatter is going on. So if you are aware about these things, remember, don't support them. Don't, I mean, uh, if the inner chatter going on, some story going on, don't encourage them. Don't uh, sort of uh, find happiness with them or find joy with them. Rather, understand this is a distraction. Understand this is not the place now you have to be. Rather, you have to return back to in-breath or return back to out-breath. So if you are educating your mind that your proper place, your working place now is nothing other than in-breath and out-breath, nothing other than rising and falling. So this is the working place for you right now. If you again and again introduce this new working place to the mind, mind starts to restrain itself. Mind starts to behave itself rather than staying outside. So don't go to punish the mind, rather just introduce, okay? This is this is the new place. This is the uh, sort of useful place. This is the skillful place. Rather than being in a story, rather than being in a fantasy, rather than being in a distraction. So more you educate, it will return. And uh, on the other hand, there's another trick. In a vipassana point of view, if you know right now, say you are in breath, that is one way of developing mindfulness. On the other hand, okay, now you are with, say, pain. Still, you are mindful. Now you are with sound. Still, you are mindful. The object may vary, but mindfulness may continue. So, if you have that kind of openness, uh, you can even overcome that. So, if, if you are putting too much sort of uh, bitter mind to this distraction, then your mind becomes restless. Just have a kind of uh, equanimity where even when mind goes to sound, so what is in sound? So it is now just sound. It is not that someone else has closed the door, he has to open, uh, close it uh, slowly without making noise and like that if your uh, mind starts to make a story, then it's, uh, it becomes a big thing. Rather try to maintain your attention at the sound level, it is just a sound then it becomes a, just an, another object and you are still aware of that, you are still mindful about that. Then return back to Anapanasati. So, therefore, it's a, I mean, definitely it will take time. So, please take time, let the mind take time. So, don't try to push it too much, then definitely mind will rest, become restless. Because too much effort is an invitation for restlessness. So, you have to have some kind of a balance balance uh, effort. So don't push too much. Yes. Uh, the next question is, is there any rule of the type of posture, especially for sitting meditation? Yeah, best thing is that the lotus posture, full lotus is the best thing maybe, but it's not essential. Uh, say if you can go for half lotus, kind of a comfortable half lotus posture, that is even much better. And uh, if not, you can uh, uh, you can use a meditation chair so that you can maintain some comfort, but don't sleep on a chair. <laughs> so that's the uh, issue. So anyway, uh, at the beginning, don't make uh, posture the posture as your main thing. So whatever the way, if you feel once you sit you can maintain that posture for longer time. So select that posture. Because slowly, slowly, your body becomes seasoned to this posture. So more, more your mind concentrated, you will forget about the posture. And your body becomes, uh, I mean, uh, insignificant when compared to your mental strength, mental development. So therefore, whatever the posture at the beginning, if you think, that in this particular posture, I am not going to sleep, fully aware, and again I am feeling comfortable. And you can select that posture. So typically, half lotus, if possible, I think uh, much better, where you are just sitting uh, without making any strain towards any of the knees or any muscles, 
rather you feel comfortably in a relaxed posture it shouldn't be kind of a tight posture and even when you are meditating don't have very tight clothes so very relaxed uh, clothes and your body has to be relaxed all the joints has to be relaxed your head and facial muscles jaws shoulders all these things has to be very relaxed and if you are feeling that relax and you can actually you have you can spend several minutes scanning the body just see whether any place are you feeling any tension if there are any tense points tense places if so just relax them release those tensions if your body feel entirely relaxed then definitely you can develop the mindfulness yeah uh, and the third question is meditation a merit or can it be converted into a meritorious activity yeah it's a it's a it's a highest merit <laughs> so you might think that uh, so there is no sound <laughs> typically we think like my uh, teacher bante dhamma ji is saying typically we think that in order to get merit we have to have a lot of uh, big loud speaker chanting flowers uh sense uh what so many sounds but meditation is just quiet just being quiet so i if i were to tell you the kind of procedure how the how buddha has uh, sort of uh, in the ascending order how buddha has uh, scheduled or what's the proper term kind of uh, ordered proper arranged them so based on his uh, omniscient knowledge so buddha says uh, if you give dana arms giving to one sotapanna and if you give dana to 100 sotapanna which one is the best which one is much better 100 sotapanna obvious right so it is much better than giving to a worldly worldly people giving to one sotapanna buddha says much better you you get more merits and giving more than one sotapanna if you give to 100 sotapanna more merits if you give to one sakadagami it is more merits then to 100 sakadagami more merits one anagami more merits 100 anagami more merits then one arahants more merit 100 arahants more merit one pacheka buddha more merits 100 pacheka buddha more merits then one samma sambuddha more merits and samma sambuddha and the disciples more merits so you can see how he has uh, put them in order in ascending order now you get more merits and then he says more than that you can get merits by preparing a dwelling place for the sangha it's a kuti puja you know kind of a dwelling place uh, for a whoever the sangha whoever the member from coming either from uh, any direction and in the few present or the future you are simply giving it uh, to the sangha it's more merit and after that buddha says if you are honestly willingly knowingly if you ge- go for refuge to the buddha buddham saranam gacchami it is more merits then dhamman saranam gacchami sangham saranam gacchami more merits three are in the same level so you are now going for refuge buddha dhamma sangha more merits then buddha says uh, you are knowingly and willfully honestly you are taking the precept panati pata veramani sikha padam samadhiyami i restrain from killing animals more merits adinna dana veramani sikha padam samadhiyami i refrain from stealing more merits kamesu micha chara veramani sikha padam samadhiyami i will restrain from mis- sexual misconduct more merit musavada veramani sikha padam samadhiyami i will refrain from telling lies more merits suramere majjapama dattana veramani sikha padam samadhyam i will restrain from taking intoxicants more merits so this five in the same level so you can see where buddha has put to the precepts so taking refuge and then the precepts then he says if one person uh, spend very slight time 
is giving an example like you are uh, feeling a scent of a flower spreading metta the more merits and then he says you know this kind of uh, snap of a finger time if you are spending time observing the impermanence more merit so that is the vipassana that's the that is the climax so where is the meditation <laughs> so you need to understand at the previous stages your merit depends on another person but now your merit depends on yourself so so now it is not me telling buddha is telling you can refer uh, velama sutta in anguttara nikaya ninth nipata that is where buddha has clearly mentioned this uh, order so he is a samma sambuddha so he understand the value of meditation value of the samatha that is what the uh, the the metta first he has mentioned and then the vipassana the Im- knowing the impermanence so that is the that is the best so that's typically we say therefore it's the adi kusala not the typical kusala adi kusala kind of a uh, most meritorious deed It's kind of a higher stress train yes okay the question number 5 it's on walking meditation when we bante when engaged in walking meditation i noticed very green leaves and dried up old leaves fallen on the walking path i started thinking of the impermanent nature of things after this i came back to noting sensations on my foot but i kept seeing many things that made me think of impermanence and changing phenomena even things from the past what should i have done thank you yeah actually this attitude is a very good thing that even when you see this external objects you can understand impermanence that's a good thing mm, but uh, uh, mm, don't go too far on thinking about it so it's impermanent you get the sign impermanent and kind of a slight understanding kind of a insight and then come back to your continuity of the meditation if it is you are continuing with walking meditation doesn't matter you continue back what in walking meditation another another sign is, signs are available again you feel impermanence good continue your walking meditation so this is bahiddava kaye kaya anupassi vihirati so you are using the external objects uh, to see the impermanence so similarly see what is going on in your own in your own body say even when you are when you are uh, say left leg when it is rising so you have already changed the posture it has lost its previous step previous stage and now it's in a different stage and now when you are placing it you are your moving has finished now you are now you are in the placing stage and then you are thrusting so you have lost the previous all the states all have gone and now you are suppose your attention draws to the right leg your right leg is now lifting so you have all this all the previous states belong to the left leg all gone all impermanent and now you are in the right leg and it is now lifting and even in this lifting it is not just a one lift rather it is very slight or small small lifting series of lifting is there one by one arising passing away arising passing away arising passing away and then you are moving little movements little little movements one movement arising passing away another little movement arising passing away another little movement arising passing away if you can go to this level so your whole walking becomes uh, top class vipassana yes <laughs> um this is a little unclear venerable bante but i'll read it um with development of observing in breath and out breath observe air breath passage has a break a pick at a moment does this event seen during anapana sati yes it can be possible basically at the beginning you may feel kind of a continuous uh, passage of air 
It's a kind of a continuous inflow. But later on, you might feel that, in be, that it's kind of a different, different step-like pattern, not a kind of a continuous waveform, like a pulse waveform like thing, something like that. Little in breath, another little in breath, another little in breath, another little in breath, like that. You might feel kind of a broken series of in breaths. It may be possible. Yeah, that indicates that you are your sampajanya uh, clear comprehension improves. Your the 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 focus improves. Uh, thing slicing of time happens. Now you are able to, you are very sharply observe what is really going on to this uh, air passage. So you that, I mean, knowing differences in this air passage indicates your mind has more vigilance. Your mind becomes more sharper. So that's a growth actually. The last one is actually a compliment to Kalal Goda. I really appreciate the system of work practiced here uh, and I wish everyone who helps in the many uh, tasks uh, Nibbana in this life itself may the triple gem bless you all yeah, Sadhu Sadhu So that finishes the written yes. questions So if you have any verbal questions so you can uh, come forward, please. Come, come. Uh, most wonderful, Panthi. Yeah. Um, I have been meditating for about 11 years, and, uh, uh, and now I'm in a position that I can do Anapanasati. Yeah. Uh, at least for half an hour without, can, yes. without any distraction. Yes. Uh, and in fact, uh, I just don't feel the breath anymore and, uh, at one, uh, one stage. So I can easily get into that position. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, I uh, take a mindful challenge for one month on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, so about six months of the year, not every month, six months. So I keep on doing that. So, I, so the less... The other six months? Other six months, uh, not every day, uh -huh. but 30 day challenge is an uh, everyday thing. Uh -huh. So I use a combination of uh, sati, anapana sati, and also loving kindness meditation. And I also do gratitude practice that I have learned through this uh, neuroscience based, uh, evidence based medicine. Okay. So, uh, however, now people say that I'm more compassionate and I am different, even my husband and children say. It. Uh, and um, I used to be very hot-tempered when I saw some injustice I just couldn't tolerate anymore when I was working mm -hmm. uh, so but I I can now I'm better that way however recently when I um, came home this time I realized that my brother I was trying to help my brother with the problem that he had one of his house uh, there is a uh, illegal um, resident there and uh, government uh, officials have taken, you know, taken the other side. And so it was very, very unfair what has happened. When I heard this time I came from England about five days ago, I got very disturbed. And um, in fact, even yesterday when I came here, I meditating, I, my mind was going all over and all that. So I thought my, still my mind is not stabilized. And because I get uh, sentimental and so what advice would you give with your expert experience and knowledge? <laughs> 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 so actually it's a, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question. Actually we need to know, I mean, where we are. So that's a good, uh, good question because sometimes when things are going smoothly, going everything well that we think, now no anger, no lust, so I am an anagami, non-returner. But uh, immediately something going on and something happen, and immediately say anger rise and then you understand, oh not yet, not yet. <laughs> so basically these, these are very good uh, uh, sort of uh, testing areas. So we have to put ourselves into these difficult situations. Those are the teachers. So. The, uh, our practice has to be very practical. 
otherwise we 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 are trying to create kind of a uh, artificial environments kind of a ideal environment so that we can maintain our mind in a very good way but in the practical sense we always have to go through up and downs of the life so these up and downs of the lives actually help us to understand where we are so that's why in sometimes now even in nisarnavane there are many meditators are coming and some actually have a lot of time to meditate and they don't like to even move with others and uh, they simply want to spend more time on meditating 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 and that on the other hand they go in the concentration development you know i mean developing more concentration and staying with kind of absorbed state of mind and that that actually prevents them to even move with other people but it's not a proper way of practice because your practice has to be tested you you have to go to the society you have to move with others and you need to observe how your mind behave how your mind uh, react with others react to these difficult situations then only you can understand where i am so um, so in that sense i think you can welcome this situation because honestly humbly if you understand the state of state of your mind still you can see this i mean uh, it can withstand some less uh, sort of intensity less intense situation but when but st- still it can't withstand this kind of high intensity situations where something happened to your close relatives still you have some impact but to some others you have kind of a uh, some other people when it is happening you can bear you can maintain equanimity so slowly slowly we need to we need to find out how even with this intense situation how i can maintain this stability so it takes time definitely so more more and more you need to practice say for example suppose you meditate you strengthen your mindfulness and you next day you go to your a uh, working place many distractions many uh, sort of uh, uh, hot situations and again you come back on that day your mind is really distracted again you need to practice how again to come back to the settle settlement kind back to the middle area suppose it took about 3 hours to settle back so next day you are going again again now the suppose you go through the went through the same situation again you need to practice once you return back to home again you need to practice now suppose it may not go on to the same 3 hours but maybe 2 and 1/2 hours like that but still a struggle so again you go to the next day like that continuously more and more you uh, go through this cycle more and more you will understand even in with this situation how i can maintain my mind without stress so there are problems are available it is not that we are we are we want over we want face problems definitely problems are there so how i can maintain my mind without agitated without getting stressed without getting tensed even these problems occur actually these problems are our teachers so once you develop vipassana these problems becomes our teacher so therefore that's why in uh, Mangala Sutta Buddha is telling puttas loka dammehi chittam yassana kampati asokam virajam khemam etam mangala muttamam so that is the last verse in the, the um, Mangala Sutta puttas loka dammehi so this loka dhamma is the vicissitudes of the life ups and downs of the life so you one day you get gain another day lose one day you get fame another day you get blamed one day you get happiness the other day unhappiness so likewise the ups and downs happen every day it is common not only to us even to arahants even to the buddha so but they are they are in a more posi- kind of a developed position other our, more than ourselves that they can maintain without fluctuation life is always going up and down but they can maintain at least into some kind of middle range kind of a middle area without going to ups and downs puttasaloka dammehi chittam yassa na kampati so when these vicissitudes happening your mind is 
uh, sort of uh, not agitated, not uh, fallen, or sort of when happiness is coming, you are not coming to the other side, or not overwhelmed by that. On the other hand, when the downside happened, you are not crying and uh, repenting, regretting, and all these things. You are not coming to that. So you are main, trying to maintain your mind always in the middle region. So definitely it's a practical practical point. And I, I like to uh, introduce you one book, you can read that. It's written by one uh, uh, Burmese doctor, Dr. Mrs. Thin Thin. And uh, her work is called, her book is called Living Meditation, Living Insight. Uh, it's a very, book, a very beautiful book and now in Nisarnavane we are translating that and it will be published soon in, into Sinhala but the English version is available for you to download. You can read that she is beautifully showing this practical aspect of meditation. Yes, definitely these problems uh, help us to develop mindfulness and may uh, understand various possibilities how we can become mindful, how we can maintain mindfulness, maintain sort of uh, unattached, unentangled, un, uh, sort of uh, without stress, how we can maintain our mind even with these extreme situations. Definitely it's a practical point. Yes, thank you. Yes. That's okay. It. Right. Okay. okay, so we have spent around one hour in uh, question and answer session. So we'll be meeting you around 4 p.m. for the Dhamma Sermon. Thank you very much for active participation.